in fractions, this begins in 2020, the future is near, more access, more everyone, more everything. Begun. This is the XFL. What is up, my friends? Welcome to another edition of the XFL Week in Review. I am your host, The Mark. And on this week's show, Kevin Gilbride, named XFL New York head coach. We got the XFL Tampa Bay head coach coming on Thursday. And Oliver Luck talks overtime, one, two, and three-point conversion, Johnny Menzel, and so much more. So how do you get in touch with the show? You email podcast at xflnewshub.com with your MP3s or thoughts, or just use the Twitter hashtag XFLWIR. Cutoff time is 5 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. And remember to leave us a review on iTunes and we'll read it on the show. We have this week's question of the week that we'll get to in a little bit. If you were Vince, would you buy the AAF? We'll get into your responses about that later on the show. This week's question... Based on the fact that we have Kevin Gilbride, we'll have a new XFL Tampa Bay head coach coming out very soon. We basically have six coaches, so I want you to rank the XFL coaches so far. That is for next week's question of the week. Think about it. Mull it over. We might even have another head coach by the time we record this show again, because Oliver Luck has said they want to wrap up all the head coaches announcements by the end of the month. All right, fans, with that, we got a lot to get into. So without further ado, let's just get into the week that was the XFL. It is with great pride that I am able to introduce the head coach and general manager of your XFL team in New York City. Please join me in welcoming... Kevin Gilbride. Oliver, thank you for that kind introduction, and more importantly, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be part of this new spring football league created by Vince McMahon, financed so generously by Vince McMahon. It's certainly an opportunity that I'm very, very excited about for a number of reasons. One, having a chance to spend a lot of time over the last few weeks with Oliver and growing to learn of his vision and his plans and his hopes for our league. I can't help but be caught up in his enthusiasm, but also on a much broader range, the entire group of people that I've met at the XFL have really been very, very impressive with their professionalism, with their commitment, with their enthusiasm. You can't help but come away confident that the efficiency of this league is going to give us a chance to be maybe successful where some other leagues in the past have not been. So I think today's affair just gives you a little insight. And Thanks, Stephanie, for all her hard work in putting this thing together for us. But also, it puts me back in the uh, coaching saddle again, which uh, uh, I certainly enjoyed being an analyst. It was nice to be correct 100% of the time, uh, as opposed to coaching where you're never right. So, But it, except for playing, the chance to be back coaching, motivating, putting together a team, uh, that's what I enjoy doing, and, uh, and it's nice to have that opportunity again. And then finally, I'm intrigued by being in something at the ground floor level, you know, to be at the start, to have a chance to contribute in the shaping of this league as we look forward to getting to the point where we have the final iteration of what this new reimagined football league is going to be like. For those of you who are worried, who are diehards, thoroughbred uh, football fans, I assure you that the basic tenets and principles of the game are still there. The teams that block better, that tackle better, that uh, do the things that have to be done cohesively and with discipline, they're the teams that are going to win. But it is going to be exciting, some of the tweaks that are taking place. Uh, and I think the fans are going to really appreciate it. I know this, the challenge for the coaches strategically has been enlarged, uh, particularly when you're looking at some of the things like the extra point, the overtime, et cetera. You better have a pretty good red zone offense, I can tell you that, because many of the games are going to come down to what takes place within the 10-yard line. Uh, although 
participating and contributing to the development of the league is certainly a big part of what I have to do. My primary focus, no question, is to build this franchise, this organization. I look very much forward to working in partnership with Janet and uh, making this the, the New York franchise, the flagship franchise of the XFL. I'm sure with her help, we're going to be able to get that done. But if that's going to take place, it's incumbent upon me to put together a staff and starting with the personnel people. we got to get a group of guys that can – Um, not only identify who the good football players are, but also evaluate and understand what it is we're trying to develop in the locker room culturally and what we're trying to do offensively and defensively with our systems and get people that fit, that can help us be successful as a football team. Uh, And then when we get those players there, then I've got to put together a staff of good teachers, motivated teachers, guys that can match the enthusiasm of these players who want one more shot. You know how desperate they are, how hard they're going to work. We need those same kind of people, people that are great educators, great teachers, great motivators, good men. And it's coming upon me to do just that. Unfortunately, that uh, I, I am blessed uh, with a support staff in my family that allows me to be completely devoted and committed to doing just that. And uh, my wife of over 44 years is here, and she's, uh, as she has said, has endured 19 moves. And I say it's only 13, but she counts the moves within the city, and I don't. If the same. <laughs> But uh, 19 times, but because of her support and the fact that she handles so skillfully all the things that are done in our house, it has allowed me to focus entirely on what I had to do coaching football. Uh, One of the things that has happened because of that commitment she has to our family is that she missed my last press conference, the one in San Diego. Uh, She was there at the one at uh, Southern Connecticut, and that was a much more successful one, so I'm glad she's here today. Uh, but she was there taking care of our two daughters who were suffering from uh, reconstructive knee surgeries uh, from soccer injuries, and so she wasn't able to come out to San Diego. Uh, Ironically, one of my daughters is here, Kristen. Um, She's here with her husband, James, my favorite son-in-law. Of course, he's my only son-in-law, but uh, we're delighted to have both of them here and then my granddaughter, uh, Kaylee, the oldest of our five grandchildren. Uh, She quite frankly, is one of the primary reasons that I resigned in the first place. Uh, I had wound up giving up a lot of time and, and, and things that uh, you just miss when you're coaching with your family, with your own children. You just don't do those things. You have no choice. If you're going to be successful coaching, you have to be completely committed. And though we always say it's family first, quite honestly, it never is family first. It's, it's your job first and then it's family. So it reached a point where now I could have afforded to step away a little bit, and I did. I didn't want to have what happened with my own tr- children happen with my grandchildren. So I was glad to be able to step aside and, and spend some quality time with them. But it's gotten to the point now where I start telling my stories. Uh, my granddaughter, my oldest one, she finishes them for me. So I realized it was time to get back and create some new ones. So that's what I'm doing. So I at least had to have a new audience, if nothing else. But uh, I'm delighted that all of you are here. It's nice to see so many familiar faces. It's nice to think that you're here to wish me well, but maybe it's just here to get another pound of flesh. I don't know. But uh, regardless, I know it's going to come down to how well we do on the football field. I certainly appreciate the the knowledge and the passion of the fans that are here in the tri-state area. And I know it's important that we give them a product that they can get excited about, can get behind. And that'll require passionate play by our players, disciplined play by our players, physical play by our players, and that's what I look to do. So thank you very much for being here. I look forward to getting involved, getting started, and please be out there to support us in the spring. Thank you. So there you have it, Kevin Gilbride's announcement. Familiar with the name? He had a little fracas. Remember like some coach, Buddy Ryan or something, punched him on the sideline with the Houston Oilers? Do you remember that? There's video of that. So a little bit about his background as head coach. He spent two seasons leading the San Diego Chargers from 97 to 98 and guiding his alma mater, Southern Connecticut State University, from 1980 to 1984. That's his head coaching experience. Now, his coaching overall started in the college ranks first as a linebacker coach at Idaho State and Tufts University became defensive coordinator 
coordinator at American International University in 78. We're talking, this guy's been around for a while, following a stint as head coach at Southern Connecticut State University. Spent two seasons at the professional level as quarterback wide receivers coach for the CFL Ottawa Rough Riders in 85 and 86. Then returned to college football as a passing game coordinator in 87 and offensive coordinator in 88 for East Carolina University. In 1989, he made the jump to the NFL where he spent the next 25 years on the sidelines as a quarterback's coach for the Houston Oilers and New York Giants, offensive coordinator for the Oilers, Jacksonville Jaguars, Pittsburgh Steelers, Buffalo Bills, Giants, and two seasons as head coach of the Chargers. As Oilers quarterback's coach, he worked with Warren Moon, who passed for more than 3,600 yards and 23 touchdowns. Warren Moon had a great career and a Hall of Famer. A year later, as offensive coordinator, the Oilers scored 405 points with Moon passing for more than 4,000 yards and 33 touchdowns. As Giants quarterbacks coach, he was entrusted in the early NFL career of a one Eli Manning. And as the team's offensive coordinator, the two would combine to win a pair of Super Bowls championships. Gilbride played quarterback and tight end at Southern Connecticut State University, where he earned a bachelor's degree in physical education. He continued his studies at Idaho State University, earning a master's degree in athletic administration. He's born in New Haven, Connecticut, resides in Naples, Florida with his wife, Deborah, has three children, his daughter, Kelly and Kristen, and son, Kevin, who is the Chicago Kevin M. Gilbride, who is the Chicago Bears. Bears tight end coach. A lot of good pedigree, a lot of good background. You heard his thoughts about why he came back, needed it. They, these guys have a, a, it's a different ball game with the XFL because it's not a year round thing. And it's interesting to hear what Steve Spurrier had said previously about what draw him to the AAF. And you see that this is why somebody like a Kevin Gilbride is interested in in the XFL. He knows the market. No one threw this name out. I think it's a good pick. And we'll see what more announcements are to come. St. Louis fan, are you ready? The XFL will introduce the St. Louis head coach on April 18th. Press alert came out. They will be at the Dome at America Center. The announcement will begin at 1 p.m. Eastern. So stay tuned to XFL News Hub on Thursday for all the coverage of who this new St. Louis coach will be. If you're wondering what John, no longer Johnny, Manziel's plans are for the future, look no further than his recent Instagram post. The former NFL, CFL, Spring League, and Alliance of American Football quarterback took to social media to stop the speculation about his future after the AAF closed its doors late last week. John wants back into the NFL. Manziel emotional post on Instagram revealed that he'll be spending time with family in Texas and at the Texas A&M campus gearing up for a run at the NFL once again. Quote, for everyone asking me what the next move is and all the crazy assumptions out there, I'll be the one to set it straight. I have one single goal right now, and that is to get back to the NFL, Manziel said. He went on to say, until that call comes or the opportunity presents itself, I'll be working every day to be prepared. I plan on spending time with my family in Texas and getting back around the university I love with all my heart. Thank you for all the support over the years. It truly means the world. His Instagram post was a picture of him holding the Heisman. Now, Manziel bounced around the spring league, left and was kicked out or left. We don't know the whole deal with the Canadian Football League and, of course, was part of the AAF's Memphis Express before its demise. Now, XFL Commissioner and CEO Oliver Luck suggested late last week that they are open to Manziel playing in the XFL if the coaches feel his skills are there. Now, it remains to be seen if an NFL team is willing to give him another shot. A stop at the XFL in 2020 to prove he still has game is more probably likely. If he plays well, that stop could could be brief, and his goal of returning to the NFL could happen. WWE issued a survey via its WWE Fan Council site asking what fans would like to see in the new XFL in 2020. According to Wrestling Observer Radio, several ideas revealed more possible rule changes and overall concepts for the league. Quote, warp speed football reinvented, close quote, is the marketing concept being used by the XFL to promote their brand of football. The survey notes players must be in better condition than they normally was because they're trying to speed up the game. Some potential rules that were found in the survey. Number one, no kickoffs, no timeouts, a 20 second play clock, which would could eliminate huddles. A running clock could only stop during a change of possession. 
Now, these are just ideas thrown out there. Some other ideas discussed. New helmets with no face guard so fans can see the facial expressions of the players. I thought that was interesting. Marching bands like in college football. That's right. Instead of having the cheerleaders, and we all know the whole deal with the XFL cheerleaders, what if we had XFL marching band? Now, I play the drums. Maybe I could try out for the DC team. That intrigues me. Just I don't know how to get the practices. might be a pain. Backstage locker room video segments allowing fans to see what is happening during the game, which is fine. Fans calling plays. We already know this. This is talked about via the partnership with Your Call Football. I'm not really sold on that. We could make a comment about how the WWE is actually listening to his fans. I mean, with this survey, they put out survey for the wrestling fans and they kind of listen, but then they don't kind of listen. But we we won't get into that. You can find out about that stuff at All Wrestling, our sister site. But it's interesting that the XFL would actually use, which I agree with, use the fan base of the WWE, because it's mostly male, in that demographic to see kind of where they're at as far as football goes. I don't like, I don't think it's a bad idea. And the marching band thing really seems kind of cool. Oliver Luck was on Pro Football Talk podcast. They talk about the XFL with Mike Florio. They went over some other things. Here's some notes from the interview, Oliver rated his surprise in the AAF folding at a 7 out of 10. He was surprised and saddened. Surprised it folded before the season completed. He said Charlie Ebersol approached Oliver Luck years ago about starting a league and he turned him down because of lack of capital to start a league. He was very adamant about that is the key. And he was uncomfortable with the idea with multiple investors because that means multiple decision makers. He liked the idea that Vince is one guy with the purse that's all he has to deal with. And the fact that Vince was like, I got the money. Here it is. Look, that was definitely a selling point for Oliver Luck. I knew Vince didn't come up with Oliver Luck's name on his own. I figured Charlie Ebersole had that Oliver Luck name and gave it to Vince. And that's where he got his guy. That's just my pure speculation. But I know Vince from my years of following the WWE and running a dirt sheet. So uh, this is just my guess. Now, Luck was involved with NFL Europe, as some of you may or may not know, and knows a new sports league could need anywhere from two to four years to really fully develop, and it requires a lot of money. He didn't know anything about the merger talks of the AAF and XFL. The XFL is not interested in AAF team markets at this time. They are looking at what the AAF did well and not so well. AAF did well with their game pace. He liked that and liked the audio elements that they had in the game. But again, the biggest thing that he reiterated was capital problems. Um, team facil- practice facilities are still being looked at and it takes time to finalize. They're going to use, for example, the old St. Louis Rams practice facility for the XFL team. Others are being worked out. We heard about the old RFK stadium will be where DC XFL, your America's team, Washington DC XFL, we're going to take over. That is America's team. Forget about whatever with the star and the silver helmet. America's team is the Washington XFL DC team. Just pointing that out there. He said 40 million football fans are used to games in the fall and they could get some fans out of that number. A spring league would do well. I've heard him say that multiple times about the whole 40 million thing. And he's right. If you get a couple million out of that 40 million, you're good. XFL games will be on Saturday and Sundays towards the end of the season. There might be Thursday night games. TV deal will be announced soon. I have a feeling that this will be coming in the month of May, no doubt about it. The league is open to talking play- players not NFL draft eligible. That's been out there for a while about taking high school and potential college players. XFL would be open to John Manziel as long as the coaches felt that he's good enough. XFL would stay a spring football league even if the NFL goes on strike next year. Between the AAF going down and potential NFL strike in 2021, I think it was, or 2022, that could really bold well for the XFL. And Vince has the staying power, and, and he t- says that it won't be a year, one year, and done league like the AAF, that they are in it for the next couple years. Vince has got the capital. Now, on to one of the points that he started talking about was the rules. 30-second playcock. Kickoff will be different. We have a picture on XFL News Hub of what the kickoff looks like. No fair catch, five-yard halo rule on punt returns. Overtime will be more like a soccer or NFL shootout versus an NFL overtime quarter. 
So that's five on that's five shots from on offense, five shots for score on the other. We'll get into that in a little bit. Games will time will be under three hours. Forward pass rule, a pass that doesn't cross the line of scrimmage. So you can do you can pass it back and forth multiple times as long as it's behind the line of scrimmage, and then it can go forward. 11 on 11, same type of field, same number of downs. The XFL will use one, two, or three-point conversions. We'll get into that more detail in a second. So teams scoring a touchdown in the XFL could emerge with six, seven, eight, or nine points. This makes tape bring games back into the fold if teams are down. There'll be around 12 changes to the rule that differ from the NFL and NCAA. Now, the one, two, three-point conversions. So all are not kicks. They're plays from scrimmage. So there's no kicks, plays from scrimmage. A one-point play is from the two-yard line, two-point play is from the five-yard line, and a three-point play is from the 10-yard line. You got one shot out of it to throw it in the end zone to get that three points, that two points, or one points. There is no kick. So that is how the one, two, or three-point conversions will work. Now, the breakdown of the XFL overtime shootout. 44 guys are on the field. Half is on one side, half is on the other. Five opportunities, each team to score one point. Each side will have five chances to convert a two-point conversion. The defense can score a point in overtime from a turnover. And overtime would last as little as four minutes. So basically, I believe it's either at the 15 or the 10-yard line, or I think it's the 15. I'm not really sure where exactly they're going to have it. But then the offense has five shots. And if they score three points, then we shift to the other half of the field, and they got five shots, and if they can beat those three points that the other team and get four, then they win. The teams are on the field to watch it. I think it's going to be the shootout overtime format I think will be a ton of fun to watch. The XFL is branding itself as football reimagined. It is also looking at ideas that can reimagine the way the game is officiated, including a new, quote, tap rule that sends players to the sideline. So the XFL has partnered with the Spring League to become its testing ground for ideas and rulebook changes. One approach is using a device that allows an official to tap a player who has done something wrong, but that that does not rise to the level of a penalty flag. Purely optional call by the official aimed at diffusing a situation rather than slowing the game down with a penalty flag coming out. We all know how that annoying that is. The tap would be used when the infraction doesn't, quote, significantly impact, close quote, the play. An example would be holding on an offensive lineman who is on the other side of the field away from the play. The tap penalty would apply only to one play, and the player would run off the field. After the play, the coach can put the player back on the field or keep them out. Ultimately, it's designed to keep the game moving and reducing the number of flags, penalty flags, no matter how justified they may be, tend to irritate us fans. This is very prevalent in NFL games and will make this rule a welcome change for fans. The tap rule is one of many changes potentially coming in 2020. Also at the Kevin Gilbride, press conference, they announced the XFL New York president is Janet Dutch. She's most recently a senior vice president of on location experiences and a longtime executive at Madison Square Garden. Good pickup and has been named president of the XFL football team in New York. Her background served since 2016 as senior vice president of marketing communications for on location location experiences, a leading premium hospitality business. They dealt a lot with sports, clearly. Prior to that, she spent 18 years with Madison Square Garden as senior vice president of both the New York Rangers and your New York Knicks, who are terrible. She was a principal architect in developing and managing the brand identities of both teams and leading go-to market ticketing and retention strategies along with in-game entertainment, merchandise, community relations, and digital and fan engagement initiatives and programs. That must have been tough working with Dolan as your boss. I feel for her. Dutch was named the Sports Business Journal's prestigious 40 Under 40 in 2015, the same year she was honored by leaders in sports as one of its 40 Under 40 Marketing and Communications. She earned a bachelor's degree in mass communications from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where she was a student athlete on the volleyball team. She resides in New Jersey. Second female president in the XFL to go along with Heather Carrots of L.A. Bold moves. 
I'm liking this stuff, man. Why not give these ladies a chance? Give these coaches a chance. Give guys like Pep Hamilton a chance. I am so, aren't you excited about the XFL? I'm totally excited. I can't wait. It's been a lot of fun covering it, and I'm, I'm really liking the direction where things are going. All right, we'll be back with your emails and social media stuff right after this. There is only one place that you can get all your XFL news. That is xflnewshub.com. We go all the way back from the beginning of time for the XFL all the way up to today's stuff where you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. All those locations to get all your XFL news. We are your number one source of XFL football news. From now all the way until February 2020 kickoff. So stick with XFLNewsHub.com for all your latest information. Follow us on all the social medias. That's XFLNewsHub.com. Remember it. Write it down. XFLNewsHub.com. All right. Remember, our question of the week next week will be ranked the XFL coaches so far. We'll get that will be next week. This week, if you were Vince, would you buy the AAF? We'll get into that in a minute. First, we hit the Twitters, our friends on Twitters. Brian about John Manziel wanting to be in the NFL. XFL could be first stop. Snowboarding Brian says, I thought no players with criminal records were allowed in the XFL. I think they're lenient on that. We'll see. I mean, I'm sure they're going to meet with him, and I'm sure they know what his deal is and what's going on with John Manziel. And hopefully he's changed the leaf. I think it would be big news to get him. I think everybody will wait and see if he can last a season in the XFL before, I think, getting a shot with an NFL team. Just my opinion. So I messaged the Spring League, and I was like, where can you watch the games for the 2019 season? Bleacher Report Live is supposedly where you can watch it, but they have games from 2018. Nothing new that I can find. C. Pritt 16 says, I couldn't find anything even when they were live. We want to watch. I want to watch the Spring League. C. Pritt 16 wants to watch it too. I wanted to see what was going on. I did flip it on the other day. I didn't realize it was 2018. So I guess they're not covering it, but I want to see it there. There's highlights of it. And it looks like it's filmed unless they're using their partners as testing grounds the broadcast partners to be able to be out there to, to film it. And that's why they're not allowing them to use it. Like you can't watch the spring league games anywhere about the Kevin Gilbride thing. Texan Tony 13. Where is XFL Houston coach and logo? I don't know yet. I don't know yet where exactly that's going to be. That's got to be coming soon. I bet you it would be LA and Houston would be last. One of the things that was interesting that Oliver Luck, or it was mentioned in the press conference because I'm always reading between the lines is that Kevin Gilbride was at, he mentioned that he was there at the spring league. So they've known this for a while. I would love to know who else was at the spring league and who could potentially be the next coach. Nothing's revealed yet. We got Tampa, LA and Houston. And then we got a TV deal and names. I can't wait. And speaking of names, coolest domain. I'm about talking about Kevin Gilbride, named XFL New York head coach. He says, go New York Guardians. Is that? There's no way it could be Guardians. We're not with Guardians of the Galaxy. There is no way they would allow that. On to the Facebooks. About what do you think about team marching bands, etc.? Bryce says, yes to marching bands. Dan said, St. Louis needs a coach and GM before I can answer this question. You will get your answer, Dan, on Thursday. The whole thing about John Manziel wants in the NFL. XFL could be a first stop. Nick says, Manziel better worry about any recurrences, his name, because right now the NFL is laughing at him. I'm a Manziel fan and wanted my Cowboys to draft him, but I'm glad we didn't. In a way, he just may have blanked up his career doing dumb bleep. He did, but hopefully he can get us together. Perry responds and says, Nick, if the NFL were actually laughing at him, his name would never be in media slash news. The NFL is one of the allowing him to be talked about. 
They want you to waste time knowing pointless, unimportant, non news. Chris says he is done, couldn't start an AAF. Well, he just came in at the end. Jack, simply, I refuse to watch any sports. Okay. Jason, he is a good quarterback. Everyone deserves a chance. Amen. Chad, no, he sucks. Steve, didn't Vince say in a press conference that Johnny Clipboard would not be welcome in the XFL due to his record? We will see what that, how that plays out. Scott says, calling it now. XFL Dallas playing for Bob Stoops. Now, that would be interesting. Texas A&M, football, Houston, or Dallas. Having be being there, I'm telling you, it's a perfect fit. Jonathan, with all due respect to the late country music singer, can't we just call him Johnny Paycheck now? Ooh. Eric says, never going to happen. It's over, bud. Mike says he hasn't the ability nor the gumption. All right. Not many people feeling our friend John Manziel. Finally, on the St. Louis about getting their head coach, Kevin says, let's welcome Jeff Fisher back to St. Louis. Timothy says, you, sir, win the internet today. Ty says, if Jeff Fisher was going to be coached, they definitely would have made the announcement in, on July 9th. Ouch. Brady says, Isaac Bruce or Aeneas Williams, hopefully, both have heavily involved in the community since their playing days were over. People want to know about the name, the colors, talking about Brutes, maybe Mike Martz, Josh says. We will find out. You will find out, my friends, soon enough. All right, finally, on to our question. If you were Vince, would you buy the AAF? Cool Seth Breeze says, I absolutely would. Why? I I would not buy it. On the Instagrams, we have Photos Beasley says, hell no, focus on your own company. Make it the best you can before thinking about buying another. Totally agree there. Why would he want to do that with all that debt? Disasky D1 says, agree with him there. Frank Nitty underscore 72. If I was Vince, I would focus on getting the XFL to where it should be and make a huge then. I would merge the AAF with the XFL to make it even bigger. X, uh, Michael XFL buy the assets. For life underscore 34. Buy it. Compete with the NFL. I'm going to go with some of these other guys. You don't need to buy it. No, no interests whatsoever. Paul on the Facebooks. Hopefully Vince learns from their mistakes. No exposure, no commercials, no crappy networks at bad times. Don says, Paul T. Phillips, are you serious? No exposure. They have got plenty of press and attention leading up to including the first two weeks. The network push was pretty good for a fledgling sports league. NFL Network and CBS Sports Network are available to most everyone. Plus, they stream free on YouTube. Of the many mistakes that AF seem to have made, I disagree with you. Some of the you mentioned. Dan said, get San Antonio and Orlando. Make them teams 9 and 10 after year one. If the league is still around, keep the Commanders and Apollo's brand. Just make sure all the workers' compensation issues have been resolved before sporting a team. San Antonio will rival with Dallas and Houston. Orlando will develop a good rivalry with Tampa. After three years, if expansion is privileged, go for San Diego, Birmingham, and Memphis. I wouldn't be surprised. If the XFL eventually landed in a couple of markets, but not this year and definitely maybe next year. It really depends on how well the league does, the ratings, the revenue, if they expand. But honestly, I don't think expansion is on their radar for the first three years. I hate to break it to you, AAF fans. I don't think they're going to expand anything until they have three years under their belt. Uh, Sean says, I don't know if buying the AF is the right thing to go right now. I would say buy the rights to certain teams, San Antonio, Orlando, Birmingham, San Diego. But if the entire league was a mess, then maybe buy the rights to certain teams and they structure those franchises to the XFL business plan. I do this thing. Some of the businesses from the AF have good followings. It would make brand sense wise to try and make them assets in the XFL is like to see every AF team come over, but some just not productive to the business side of things. Other people said, no, they're not interested. They should not be interested. All right. On to our email. Always interesting there. Here we go. Fred says, Doug, congrats on the XFL move. 
I reached out a couple of weeks back about on-field officiating. I wondering if you've taken any more steps regarding recruitment, experience, character, the people will work in your games. I am currently working at blah, blah, blah. I'm a practice official. Somebody's looking for a gig as an official. This is, we have nothing to do with it. Check XFL.com. Ron Tay. My name is Ron Tay Winston. I was trying to find out if the XFL were holding open tryouts, and if so, when. I'm a former football player. I was trying to get back into the game. If information can be provided, I would appreciate it. Thanks. Check out XFL.com. But also, I heard that they're going to have team tryouts in the areas, kind of like a local camp open type thing. You have to just head over to XFL.com. Or stay tuned to XFL News Hub, actually. Once those things come about, we will be covering it. I might actually even go to the DC one to check out the practices going on over there. So stay with XFL on that one. That is a good question. Clinton says, hello, my name is Clinton. I filled an application to play in XFL, but I have not heard anything yet. Will players be contacted as far as who can try out? I love the game. I just want an opportunity to play. I'm XFL News Hub, not XFL.com. So you need to reach out to them. Okay. Finally, Nicholas, our number one emailer. He says, at one show I posted, I would love to see the XFL reach out to Marty Morningwig. I did my research and saw that he is not with the Baltimore Ravens anymore. He would be a good hire. I would love to see the XFL hire Chris Winky, Jack Del Rio, Mike McCarthy, or Todd Dowling. I love what the XFL is doing. They are taking their time to ensure a great product and to work out the kinks to find what rules and ideas will work and which ones will not love it. I agree with Nicholas, number one emailer. I don't think Mike McCarthy is around to do that. I thought Martin Morningwig is still with the Ravens. But no, you're right. Baltimore Ravens promoted Greg Roman to replace Martin Morningwig as offensive coordinator. See how that deals with Lamar Jackson, but you're right. Marty is out. He was okay, but he's a name too. Where is he going to go? A lot of great names out there. We'll see who St. Louis gets. Jim Hazlitt's name has been out there for a while. I would assume my guess is Jim Hazlitt, St. Louis, and then LA. You got to drop a big name in LA. He's got to have ties to San Diego, Los Angeles football, Fisher, Jeff Fisher could be a big name. I don't know. They're pulling these guys' names out, and I'm like, oh, no, I even thought about that. I don't think Mike Martz is, is involved. Uh, they have contract issues. I don't think the X, I think the XFL has had their coaches for a long time, and they waited to make these announcements. So anyway, Remember, next week's show, rank the XFL coaches so far. Hopefully, we'll definitely have who Tampa Bay is. And maybe we can get another one in by Monday or Tuesday of next week as well. Moving fast and furious. Remember, if you want to be part of the show, email podcast at xflnewshub.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, XFL News Hub. Leave us a review on iTunes. We'll read it on the show. Remember, you can listen to iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Stitcher. For show notes, head over to xflnewshub.com slash xfl-podcast. Just go to XFL News Hub, click on the podcast link. You will have show notes. We'll put the links to the articles that we've talked about, a little description. You can check out the video that we have when it comes to this. You can listen to it, download the show. All that you need to do, just head over to XFL News Hub, click on the podcast link. You'll find the latest episode and all the old past episodes too. That's it. It's been a great week of the XFL. So excited about Thursday. So excited about what's coming soon. Stay with us. We got a lot to go over each week. All right. Thanks for listening, y'all. God bless. And I will see you all later.